Okay, we are recording. So again, welcome to the West Virginia Robotics Alliance town hall meeting on our response to the COVID crisis and as it affects um, our 13 unique robotics programs that uh, we implement here. Uh, I realize many of you have been wondering, I'm sure, what's the plan and how is this gonna work this season? And um, frankly, it's a big unknown. Uh, you know, the programs themselves, FIRST Robotics, VEX Robotics, you know, WRO, they're, they're all similarly trying to determine what is or is not permitted, what can or can't we do, what will the season look like if it's in one scenario A, scenario B, scenario three. So uh, even just this week, FIRST, you know, is unveiling brand new tools that aren't even functioning yet, but they were glimpsing them as, as to what might be available for us starting later in the fall. So uh, things are evolving is the point. And um, just, just so you're aware, our team has been discussing, I would say at least since late March, you know, how we would run the season uh, for Lego League and, and VEX and, and other programs as well. So we, we haven't been sitting on our hands. We just didn't feel like the dust settled enough for us to make a an announcement about how we would move forward. But there are certain uh, undeniable limitations that um, my team has right now, um, which, which is driving some of the decisions we're making. Uh, the, the first is that uh, if you're not aware, uh, we, we work for Fairmont State, I think Ryan has his Fairmont State shirt on. And um, while the team operates out of the NASA facility and is uh, essentially the education outreach you know, group for NASA, Ivy, and V, and Fairmont. Um, technically, most of our staff are hired by and work for Fairmont State. And as one of the state institutions, we are um, essentially under the, the guidance of the HEPC, the Higher Education Policy Commission, and there are certain guidelines and standards they've set down. Number one, as, as it is today, uh, our team is not permitted to travel. I'm allowed to go from my house to work. And if I deviate from that, I have to report myself and then potentially maybe quarantine. So um, even though there are requests for us to go out and deliver trainings, um, uh, right now I'm not, I'm not able to do that. And that also means I can't go out and do, uh, you know, face-to-face -face events anywhere. Uh, today, campus is closed to all visitors. Only students and faculty who have been tested and have a negative result are allowed on campus. So uh, our whole team was tested, we're all negative, it's good news. But um, that means I can't technically schedule, you know, any of our tournaments until we have a green light and are allowed to go, you know, bring anyone to campus besides just faculty and students. So uh, not knowing if and when those regulations will be lifted has been a real challenge for us to plan for the future. So, but we do have some things that um, we have uh, started to lock down dates and opportunities. And uh, we, are, we are gonna most importantly share with you today, how do you find out what the most up-to-date information is and where do you get that information? And I believe uh, Ryan can screen share our website and show you uh, what essentially is our, our COVID response. This has just been updated moments ago, um, and it will be uh, essentially where we recommend you, you visit to check on where we are with respect to various programs. Uh, so do you want to run through this a little bit, Ryan? Sure. So at the moment, this information is more or less the same to what you received in the email that invited you uh, to this call. Uh, the URL John posted it in the chat is wvroboticsalliance.org slash COVID. Um, and it runs through all of the, the, the plans that we mentioned uh, in the email. Um, we've broken it up by program and each section has a, a last updated date at the bottom. So as we make changes, you'll be able to, to check on the programs you're interested in 
uh, more specifically to make sure you have the most recent information. Uh, we have uh, made a few updates just this morning, um, including uh, optional scrimmages for first LEGO League. These will be uh, remote events is first preferred nomenclature. Uh, so they'll be done virtually. Uh, and they're just a, a chance to uh, have your team check in, give you some intermediate goals uh, to shoot for, uh, because we are looking at spring state championships for all of our major programs. Um, so we have, uh, to get some normalcy, we've been aiming for dates that are similar to where we traditionally have qualifiers. So those for First Lego League are November 7th and 14th. And even though it's early, uh, we are looking at whatever form the state championship takes to happen at the end of February. Um, we have similar dates for First Tech Challenge. We're going to move that state championship to the spring as well, again, the end of February. Uh, and we're looking at an optional remote scrimmage at the beginning of December. Uh, for VEX IQ Challenge, we've added in, uh, we're looking at the option of running skills only events for VEX IQ and VEX Robotics competition on November 21st. Uh, and those state championships, we're looking at March 6th, the, the traditional weekend for those. Uh, VEXU and RAD, uh, again, will go in the spring. Um, Coder Z and Zero Robotics, we're expecting to have minimal changes and impact because they are virtual programs. And we are looking at a July 2021 World Robotics Olympiad competition. Um, so I think those are the high points. And then at the end, uh, it's just a reminder that these will be changing over time. We will keep this page updated. Uh, and before specific events that you've registered for, all the teams that are registered will be reminded of the uh, format and modification changes uh, throughout the season. Back to you, Todd. Thanks, Ryan. I'm gonna grab the screen share for you for a second. And I want to share um, some exciting information uh, with all the teams that use the Lego EV3 robot. So if you're engaged in Lego League um, or if you're engaged in WRO, and we're going to make a push for Lego League teams or those who have EV3s to uh, to get involved in WRO, WRO this year for this reason. The Virtual Robotics Toolkit is a fully um, online simulation environment that gives you the full LEGO field, the first LEGO League field. It's called First LEGO League Challenge, by the way. Um, and as well, they have for many years had the full WRO field and a, a, a tournament that is built in um, as part of their program. WRO is a more affordable program to join than Lego League. It's uh, only $125 to register, and it includes one free $50 student account on the Virtual Robotics Toolkit. So I'm, I'm not going to uh, um, post this broadly, uh, but if you are interested in accessing the Virtual Robotics Toolkit for a very steep discount, for West Virginia educators only, West Virginia teams, um, please reach out to me, and um, we can in fact go directly to the the, uh, the our U.S. sales rep, Alex Crooks, and so he's going to help us uh, throughout this season, getting our Lego League teams uh, able to practice. If you can't meet in person, then your students can meet at their different locations, and they can all start learning their coding. Um, and even practice missions. So this is powerful. This is pretty exciting stuff, um, which is why I'm excited to announce it today. So again, I'll, I'll send out some information that you can contact me if you'd like more information, but uh, I, I don't wanna advertise the pricing and stuff. It's one of those too good to advertise on the website uh, pricing situations. So that's, that's the one exciting piece of news that I had, but to reiterate what Ryan said earlier, um, we're going to, in broad sweeping terms, go virtual with our programs in the fall. 
for Lego League, that means scrimmages that are optional. I've had several questions that, you know, I, my team probably won't be ready to compete in the fall with Lego League. It's just, we haven't gotten started yet. And we understand that. And so uh, we have two weekends that we've set aside. Um, uh, the first two weekends in November, which would traditionally be our qualifying weekends. So you can do a remote event um, to get prepared for A, you know, just competing, but B, also learn how to use remote events. So we're, we're all going to learn together and cut our teeth in that. Uh, in addition, um, we have only right now one weekend scheduled for a, and this is completely supported by REC Foundation, uh, and, and that is skills runs can be done as long as we're live video streaming those and we're able to referee and judge those ourselves. Um, so we have one weekend. We are looking to add more. I know that for those of you in Kanawha County, Cody Clay is doing the same. There are no in-person events in Kanawha County either, um, but there will be uh, live streamed uh, skills only challenges for IQ and EDR. Uh, moving forward, uh, again, not to be completely repetitive with what Ryan said, but uh, just to be clear, we are trying to not change the VEX weekend date. So it's traditionally been the first weekend of March. We're going to leave it on the first weekend of March. I can't legally schedule that event right now because I can't go on campus. <laughs> I, can't, I can't bring any guests, but we are going to reserve the facilities and hope that we are able to run some type of event then. Uh, with respect to uh, traditionally called Lego League Junior, now called Lego League Explore and Lego League Challenge, um, and we, we are going in FTC, we are going to ideally run our championship weekend uh, in February. And so those dates are posted um, on the website and subject to change, but that's what we're hoping to do, uh, assuming that we're able to, you know, work those events. Of all the events um, that are face-to-face, -face, I actually have the greatest confidence in Lego League because there doesn't have to be elimination matches where all the teams are in one place at one time. So I feel that we are able to modify our Lego League events in a modified face-to-face -face approach where only limited numbers of teams come in. They use a small pit space. They do their matches and they're judging and uh, they leave. Um, it is my intent for us to move Lego League, this is kind of important information, um, to the consolidated presentation uh, rubric system. So for those of you who've never heard of this, it's been, um, Ohio always pilot tests the big things uh, first. So they, they ran it last year, loved it. They're also the first state that pilot tested not having a full field in the robot design room. And again, that, that change rolled out across the in, entire nation and, and, and many countries. But uh, Los Angeles School District, which had hundreds and hundreds of teams sponsored by Will I Am, was unable to manage the logistics of three breakout rooms for three different judging types for all the teams and run events. And so uh, their coordinator came up with a single presentation design where teams would walk in, they would essentially do their five minute presentation on their project. Um, they would do their five minute presentation on robot design. We would give them a teamwork challenge and they would explain their core values to us. Um, and one set of three judges would be able to evaluate that team across all areas and aspects uh, of Lego League. It honestly makes the scheduling infinitely easier. I think it reduces stress for the students. Um, we, have, we have implemented this model in several middle schools in the past doing school-based projects because again we couldn't coordinate a big event for a lot of teams in a short period of time so uh, this also facilitates i think and puts in a good place to uh, to, to do a modified face-to-face -face schedule for lego league in the future so i think these are big changes but i think that they are well thought out they're tested and validated um, by large states, um, and my, my, our team here has familiarity with them as well. Um, so we'll be sharing that with all registered Lego League teams as you begin to pre prepare your presentations. There's really no change in your preparation. It's just in the actual management of the event schedule and uh, what the teams have to go through in terms of uh, logistics and stuff. 
So I, I guess um, at this point, I'd like to stop and see if you have any questions for uh, myself or Ryan or the rest of my team that's online. All I hear are cicadas. Hi, Todd. Um, I have a quick question. So let's say we uh, sign up for the uh, WRO to be able to utilize the virtual practices for FLL. Um, if our students are only allowed to do virtual practices, would they be limited then to only doing the virtual championship or will FLL be using um, live streamed physical like competitions and also the virtual platform. Hi, Allison. Um, good to see you. So uh, I think I, I got all the, the parts of, the, of the, the question. Right now, First Robotics is rolling out a remote platform that allows us to do judging of your presentation for LEGO League as well as scoring of your robot game. The expectation is that the team would be able to meet face-to-face uh, -face and show us the robot. They may only be a couple of students. It may not be you know, a, a team of 10, for example. So I don't know what the limitations in each county, each club, et cetera, might be. But uh, the theory would be it would be a live presentation or you know, also a live uh, robot run. Um, if, if we are forced to move into the remote mode. So Ryan, can you uh, clarify that part? And I'll get, I'll get back to your virtual robotics part in a second. Yes, so the, the system that FIRST is rolling out is uh, very similar to FLLtournament.com, which we've used in the past. So it lets us track rubrics and track scoring sheets, but it doesn't have a virtual robot platform. So you would still be running your robot physically on a table somewhere, and you'd be in a Zoom call with us with the camera positioned in a way that the referees could see the table and take score. Um, so I think the way they're setting the system up, everybody gets um, three official table runs and one practice run, just like they normally would. Um, and all of that gets logged automatically in first systems as our volunteers input the information. But there's st it's still a physical robot running on a physical table. Um, currently, that system is not set up with video built in, so we'll probably use Zoom or Discord or whatever platform most people seem able to access. Um, they are planning on adding that, but I'm not sure that they'll have it together in time for our scrimmages. Hopefully by states, if that has to be virtual, it's more complete. Thanks, Ryan. And back to your other part of your question, Allison, the Virtual Robotics Toolkit is um, an independent um, platform that anyone can buy access to. It's traditionally $50 per user. Um, but for many years now, WRO has included a virtual competition uh, as part of their, their program. And so um, the only limitation that you have really in there is you can't build any robot you want. It's, it, it doesn't have a fully functioning, like I'm gonna put you know, wheels here, motors there, and sensors there. There are limitations to what you can do. There are pre-designed robots, you can customize them, but not infinitely. So, um, but you should get an idea of how to, in terms of a teaching tool, in terms of learning um, about the missions and, and, and understanding how to do a line follow or how to utilize a sensor, or, um, you, know, you should get a pretty good idea and it has a good physics engine. It should be relatively accurate, including some of the, the glitches that happen in uh, EV3 robots. So um, it is not a requirement, but it is an optional tool, particularly if you find that your team is not able to meet in person as you described. Um, I think it would be very beneficial because while we are all driven towards a competition, I believe that the purpose, the greater good of all of this is that students are learning coding and engineering and problem solving. So if that is, if we agree that's our goal, this can help us achieve that uh, in, in a way that is clearly, you know, COVID safe. Does that answer your question? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all for the clarification. That's exactly, I'm not sure if they're going to let us have in-person practices or not. So yeah, that, that lays it all out there for me. Thank you very much. Actually, that, that question reminded me of, of another point we should talk about, and that is uh, access to fields during virtual events. And so for First Lego League, and, and not to the same extent, but generally in VEX IQ, teams tend to have their own fields, and so you will use those for your virtual events. If that poses an issue, we can figure something out in some safe way when the time comes. Uh, for, the, for FTC, for VEX, uh, robotics competition, and for some of the larger programs, not every team has a field. And that's something we're still kicking around of, of how we're going to manage is how do we, how do we get those teams access to fields for those, those virtual events without turning them into pseudo in-person events by sending everybody to one central location. So we're still uh, thinking through that. And I think the programs are on a, on a larger scale. Um, I know VEX IQ at least has addressed it somewhat uh, in their rules update, they changed uh, they, they changed their typical two driver requirement uh, to you know if you can't meet with where you know way that you'll have two drivers, you'll be able to uh, just have one student drive your robot if that's all that you can get together. Uh, so I think the other programs are still developing that guidance, uh, and we'll we'll announce that once we know more. I have a quick question about the virtual platform. Um, is that just for an individual uh, student to operate the virtual robot or can the whole team collaborate together on the one robot virtually? Hi, Carrie. Thanks for that question. I think it largely depends upon whether your team's meeting in person or not. The intent of WRO is that you get access to one account because it's account for the team that they would use when they're meeting in person, they could, you know, all take turns and discuss it and strategize. Um, if you are forced into a model where students have to be at home, then it might be advantageous to have more than one account so that they could simultaneously be logged in. I'm not sure if every single child needs an account, if that's necessary, or if you can just share accounts, maybe one or two. I think that's a question that will be individualized by team. Hey Todd, this is Mike Green from Pinal County. <clears throat> I have a VEX question for you. So, first off, can you hear me okay? Sure can, Mike. Okay. Um, so, some, you know, VEX in Pinal County Schools is a requirement, and Cody has sent out his guidance on what he thinks is going to happen. <clears throat> some schools uh, run their VEX programs during the school day. Other schools run them as after-school activities. There are very strict rules on what can happen during the school day versus what can happen after school. After-school events are treated like sports uh, where kids that are signed up for virtual schools can participate in them. If they're run during the day, uh, I don't believe virtual kids would get to participate, only the in-person kids would get to participate. So anyway, this is all kind of up in the air right now, but uh, how would a virtual VEX event work? Would we have to be running, would we have to build our robot, like our kids would have to get together and actually physically build a robot? Uh, perhaps they aren't allowed to get together and build a robot, or are there virtual VEX robots? I know there's virtual FLL stuff, but what about VEX? You know. uh, I can I can field that question. Hi, Mike. Hey. Um, so uh, there was a game manual update this week for uh, both VEX Robotics Competition and VEX IQ Challenge that went into some detail about how the virtual events will work. Um, to summarize, uh, they're all going to be skills only events, and they are strongly encouraged to take place. Uh, live and synchronously. So the, the way it will work if you want to participate or if your team participates in a, a virtual skills only VEX event is um, you'll be provided with some time that you have to connect to the meeting environment and during that time 
your team or some part of your team will need to be present physically at a field uh, with a physical robot, which they will uh, sort of inspect themselves uh, with some guidance by a, a certified head ref, and then they'll place their robot on the field and, and do their skills runs. Um, so yeah, there, there will be a, a component of physical presence necessary, and you will need to have a physical robot built to, to participate in those. And we'll have to have a physical field. To and you'll have, you'll have to have access to a physical field, yes. And some aspects of your question are going to be specific to the Kanawha County school system's policies and procedures. And because uh, your initiative there was, you know, funded by a NASA grant that required a coordinator, you, you have a point person. Um, and I'm sure Cody is working in the district office, you know, trying to come up with the best approach possible for you guys. So um, I'm sure as, as much as we want to lay this plan out and say, here, here's how it's going to work. I also have to put a caveat that for all of us, you know, it's subject to change um, because tomorrow people might not follow the guidelines and, you know, things go awry. But uh, hopefully we do. And hopefully we return back to a, at least a modified face-to-face -face schedule for all, all of our events, which would be the closest we can get to ideal uh, at this time. So if um, worst case scenario, school starts, <clears throat> and uh, they run in class, in-person classes for a couple weeks, then the infection rates go up and they shut down the schools and they send all the kids home to be virtual. Does that mean VEX shuts down because there, are, there can't be any in-person activities? So from a, from a VEX, well, I guess I can't really give that standpoint. From our standpoint, as organizing events and organizing the state championship, then we will shift into purely virtual skills only events with whichever requirements VEX puts out for those. Locally, I, that's gonna depend on school district policies and, and what have you, but we will have some form of event for those that are able to participate given their local policies. Okay, thanks, Ryan. <laughs> um, I had a question. Um, I am a community team leader, um, so I'm not really um, spotted into a school. Um, I'm more or less following um, local guidelines and state guidelines um, for meeting in person. Um, but my question is, is can we, or do you guys recommend um, providing parents with some sort of a release for um, like health and safety measures that you know, we lay out what our plan is for, you know, keeping everyone healthy, um, but then the release of responsibility of the coach, um, if anyone were to get sick and spread it within the team. That sounds like a, a real policy one. Uh, I guess I'll attempt to address that. Um, we here, you know, working out of NASA, you know, through Fairmont State, we're going to follow our guidelines and the state guidelines. And th the best I can say is, you know, uh, you're located in a county and your county has guidelines and rules about how many people can meet at once and um, mask wearing practices, etc. cetera. Um, so we're not going to create our own set of guidelines and policies except to say that, um, you know, we will follow um both university and and state guidelines um we suggest that you you know follow the ones that are applicable to you um practically speaking we ran summer camps this year and we uh, essentially you know loaned out robots to individual students um they came back and sat for a couple days before we touched them um, they were in garbage bags before that then we sanitized them using a, a variety of methods including you know ethanol and, and wipes um, while wearing masks and gloves and stuff. So, you know, that's, that's how we approached our own personal safety and that of the students who are using our robots. But, you know, in really every situation is unique and everything's dynamic. So the best I can say is just, you know, follow the policies as they evolve, um, both locally and at, at our state level. Yeah, I, I don't think any of us are 
qualified to comment on like personal liability kind of things because you're not tied to some like an overarching like a school district or or 4-h or, or something like that i'm not sure how to how to direct you best <laughs> normally it would be follow the guidelines of whatever organization you're you're organized under exactly and that's where i was you know, just a little concerned that, you know, as far as like a personal liability goes, was there anything, you know, coming out of first that recommended, you know, that people follow and, you know, were to possibly sign off on. So. Yeah, not not officially that I've seen. I'll, I also coach a community based team. We've not done anything like that. Um, but we're also not planning on meeting in person, um, particularly soon. So I think that's been our solution to that so far, is to just not meet in person. So, um, good questions. I would like to, to interject with um, something. Hey, Todd. Hey, yeah. Todd. Justin. Can you hear me? Hey, this is Justin. So yeah, I can, um, we, we're dealing with the same thing as a community team we've basically been just trying to give clear communications and follow those guidelines. And we've just communicated stuff to via email, as far as like wearing masks, um, we are cleaning before and after the community center we use, um, and that kind of stuff. We're just trying to inform parents so that way they can uh, make the best informed decision and tell them if they don't feel, feel comfortable, then we understand. But, um, I can, I can forward that email and that information to, um, the lady that was speaking to if you give me her contact information. Just to kind of share what we're doing, if it helps. AC, feel free to put your contact in there if you want Justin to share what he's using with his community group. Great, thank you. Um, I, I want to sure. share something that I think is exciting, um, and that is three years ago we were contacted by a company called Intellitech to pilot a program. Uh, at the time, it was free because it was a, a experiment essentially um, called CRCC, the Cyber Robotics coding competition and um, that program took off very well here in West Virginia. We had over 2,000 students engaged in this initiative because every student has an individualized login and all it requires is a Chrome browser. You have fully uh, remote robot, there's training modules that prepare each student before the competitive phase and then during the competitive phase they're ranked um, either in their classroom or their school or if you're in a community group you'll be ranked uh, in your community group against other community groups in what we call a virtual school. Um, and so we're the state coordinators for that event, which usually culminates in a May 15th-ish uh, state championship uh, with representatives from each school uh, coming in person. So again, I can't say that will happen for sure. Our last year's state championship was uh, essentially shut down, but the opportunity um, is there not only for you to be engaged and the, the new name for it is Coder Z League, but they've created multiple grade levels. They've uh, revamped their program uh, a, a good deal. And there is currently a free option where you can get involved in the learning phase using some of their classroom modules that they have. Um, and it's sponsored by Amazon Future Engineers. So let me just do a quick little uh, screen share and uh, show you what I'm talking about. So what you should be seeing is uh, gocoderz.com. And um, of course, right, right now the splash screen just changed away from the, the, the free option. But uh, if you go there, there is uh, going to be uh, this Amazon Future Engineers where each student can get a, here it is, the, the Cyber Robotics Back to School Challenge. So three hour free challenge uh, to learn basic programming and uh, work with your robots. So this is something that I, I would encourage every single team to do. We're gonna email that out um, to all of our teams. In addition, if you click on compete, you'll see that there's now a junior league and a Coder Z Pro League. So these have different age ranges. Fifth to eighth is our middle school, which is kind of what we have, we're doing before. And then they have a seventh to twelfth. If you'll notice, they change the programming language utilized in each one. It's just Blockly, which is essentially um, Scratch. 
for the junior. And here they use both Scratch and uh, Python is an optional uh, coding language uh, for that. And they have background courses that you take, which teach them. For those students who did one of our two three week long sessions on uh, cyber robotics, they did these courses already. Uh, you know, John was our head camp counselor for our, our summer programs. And we had, you know, across all of our, our camps, hundreds of students engaged in uh, learning robotics uh, over the, the five week periods, six, I guess six weeks that we ran uh, camp. But uh, some of those used actually these same courses that are available here. So um, Coder Z League, I can fully endorse and support as a wonderful opportunity. Um, I don't have any specific scholarships right now, but I am working with our sponsors to try and get scholarships to help offset some of the costs for those teams who can't afford registration fees uh, for this. Uh, that said, it's a hard time for our sponsors as well. Uh, several of them have contacted me back and said, we'd love to sponsor something, but <laughs> we're hard hit as you know during this time. So uh, again, we'll do our best and stay tuned. We'll send email communications out and post things on our website about these opportunities. But I could, could not encourage you enough to look at uh, Coders E League, uh, and uh, there is a revamped version of um, Zero Robotics, which is a partnership between NASA and MIT. Uh, it's a nationwide high school challenge where students virtually program a robot, and the final championship takes place aboard the International Space Station with astronauts as the referees. Um, they have a new platform that they flew up in space. So it's all brand new stuff. Um, both of those, those programs are you know, fully virtual um, and can be done uh, from home or at school. Are there any other thoughts? Um, I uh, would like to see Lego said something about purchasing additional mats for the uh, FLL challenge and extra kits for FLL Explore, but I couldn't figure out how to purchase those. We'd like to use them uh, for help with the distancing requirements. Any ideas? So I, th I think, um, Denny, your question was, can we purchase extra um, explore uh, kits um, and or compete mats and, and field kits? Is that correct? Funny. I'm on a Chromebook. It's not the best situation. I, I put it in the chat. <laughs> yeah. So Ryan, do you have as a first senior mentor an answer to whether or not we can buy or not buy additional field kits? I I don't I don't think we can right now. I don't know if we can. I'm still muted. I don't know if they have rolled that out yet. When they do, I expect it to be in your dashboard uh, underneath, yes, I agree, yes, I agree. Sorry, I'm opening my dashboard for the first time in a little while, so it's having me, there we go. Yes, it should be in your dashboard, and it should be an option under your specific team, under team finances, when it does roll out, if it does roll out. Sorry, we don't have a clear answer on that. Are there other questions um, as it pertain to, you know, our traditional face-to-face -face, uh, competitions and or about those opportunities to do uh, more virtual robotics? And I really think that this is the season where some people might spend their limited dollars, you know, registering uh, with, you know, Coder Z League. Uh, Zero box is free, by the way, so that's kind of a bonus. Hey, Todd, this is Karen O'Neill. Um, so first off, thanks a ton for organizing this. It, it helps a lot in understanding things. 
Um, and I think uh, Dana was a great introduction to this question. So um, we've been talking with our kids some, and one major concern they have with the virtual events is exactly what Dana was experiencing, which is internet sucks around here. Um, so the question was, um, if we're doing remote judging, are we gonna have an extremely limited time period? Um, it's a good chance some, a lot of our kids will be coming in from Zoom from different areas and just the delays will slow things down. So the kids were concerned about that. I'm wondering if this is something that's been thought about. Thanks. It has in passing and I think the, the general answer is that we'll, we'll be, we know that's gonna be an issue so we're going to be patient and build extra time into our schedules. Um, we are limited, like we're limited in what we can do by, by the guidelines, but uh, within those guidelines, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure you all have uh, the best experience possible. So we expect that to pop up throughout the season and, and we're, I don't know that we have a, a planned response or solution, uh, but we'll be patient with it. And, Great, thank you. Inherent in your question, Karen, I, and maybe I'm, I read this wrong, is that you were implying all the students might be distant at different locations and it's all simultaneously logging in. And I think the expectation is that the team would be able to meet, at least a portion of the team would meet and be able to run the robot. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're set up for, or I don't think the guidelines uh, really are, are designed around every single student logging in individually like we are right now. Um, it's more of a concern. We have a few kids whose parents are fighting COVID now. Um, so the concern that, yes, we get, we have to have kids at the table with the robot. We'll figure that out. But they were saying, you know, at the judging, all of the kids would like to try to participate if they can log in. And they were wondering if that would be feasible or if, in fact, doing so could be a distraction for the rest because their internet sucks. So it sounds like I'll let them know you're working on it. And we'll just, we got months. Everything could change. Yep. If it was entirely up to me, Karen, I would probably do what we did this summer. I don't know if you're aware, but uh, Asha Session uh, coordinated the first ever international, invitational, uh, not Lego League <laughs> tournament because it was not endorsed by first. Um, in that event, uh, I was one of the head judges and uh, we had teams pre-record their presentations and pre-answer judges' questions. So we were able to do the judging phase that way. Um, every team was asked to do their darndest to do a live uh, stream of their robot game, but there were one or two teams that were unable to do that, and they did accept a recorded, you know, session of them running their robot. So um, that's a that's a fantastic that's idea. Thanks. Are the guidelines that first is endorsing right now, um, nor Vex. But again, we're as Ryan said, we're going to be very patient, and, and and we'll interpret the rules as as flexibly as we can. That sounds great. I'll, I'll let them know. And at least it'll give the kids a way to participate if, if things fall apart on them. So thank you. Todd, this is Stephanie Simpson. and I've got a, a question. I can hear you. Okay, but my question has more to do with the actual season itself. Am I understanding right that we have the virtual scrimmages, November 7th, 14-ish, and then we all automatically advance to state, which is potentially the end of February. Am Great. I correct in that? Thanks for asking that question. Um, I, I know we said it, but it, it probably needs to be reinforced. Uh, my expectation, sadly, is that um, we are gonna drop well below 100 teams of Lego League this year, um, Lego League compete. And as such, uh, even if we had a full-blown normal face-to-face -face event, uh, I know that our facility and our staff can handle uh, uh, you know, a large group. So uh, essentially we've rolled back to a time when qualifiers were not necessary. Every team who registers for Lego League is accepted into our state championship and has equal shot. Um, to prepare you for that event, we're gonna offer um, you know, at distance virtual uh, scrimmages where you can deliver your, your presentation if you like, or run your robot and get you know, refereed, giving both you and us a chance to see what a remote event would even feel like. Uh, so that's, that's the plan right now. And uh, in terms of the date, 
we set a tentative date. And I have to say tentative on everything because, like, again, I can't actually book the facilities because we're, we're, we're sort of shut down in terms of campus visitation. But uh, we picked February 26, 27, 28 as our big weekend for first. Um, if, you, if you recall, we run Lego League and Junior um, on Saturday and FTC on Sunday traditionally during our regular model. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. I put the whole weekend there because I think we might have to spread things out with smaller groups coming in a modified format. Uh, FTC, I don't know. It may just be that's only Lego League that weekend and FTC has to go into a remote mode because of its requirements and stuff. Um, and then the weekend following that, the 5th, 6th, um, and 7th of March, the first weekend of March, is our traditional VEX tournament weekend. We're leaving that on the books as, as normal. Okay, and the scrimmages are like, they're gonna be virtual. Can we also participate in, if it's possible, live scrimmages as time goes forward? You know, if, if we have some type of, I guess, moderation in the distances that our different counties require us to be. So I would encourage, I mean, this is a, a opportunity for community groups and schools to take leadership. Um, I, I really feel like I'm wearing the shackles right now. Like I can't, like I literally can't drive. I've been invited to schools and to districts across the state to give some workshops because they're open and they're running. And I, we just clarified with our boss, we're not permitted to do that. It is, you know, I'm a full-time employee at Fairmont State and I'm not allowed to travel outside home and work. <laughs> so, um, for at least, you know, on, on my work time. So that, that is a limitation for me, but an opportunity for you. You could host a scrimmage. Um, there, we have AmeriCorps volunteers. We will actually be threading our third AmeriCorps volunteer. They are permitted to travel. So we could potentially support a socially safe, you know, scrimmage event um by bringing some fields and some field kits and stuff out uh, i can't you know i can't guarantee anything this at this moment but uh as ryan said we're gonna be as flexible as possible we'll be as supportive as we possibly can be and we will be creative in our solutions but uh i i would i would look to you to to help us to host an event like that um in your area uh, and do it in a way that uh, doesn't violate any guidelines okay thank you so we got a, a question in the chat that is somewhat related. Uh, is there an alternate site for the state championships in the event Fairmont State does not relax its visitation policy before the state championship dates? Um, I think I can at least partially answer this question. Um, it, if they've not relaxed their visitation policy, I find it unlikely that they will have also relaxed their restrictions on us planning events in person. Um, and so if there is an alternative site for the state championships, I doubt that we would be allowed to be the ones who plan it. Uh, Todd, if you want to yeah, add to that. I think, I think what Ryan's saying is if, if we were to, uh, if the policy doesn't change in the way it is now, and as of today, if I were to you know schedule an event at a different location, I'd probably get fired. So I'm, I'm not inclined to do that. Um, and, and what it means is we, we'll, we will have to move into the virtual format, which many states are gonna probably end up doing. You know, it, it's hard to know uh, what the future holds. Um, if people are going to, you know, follow the guidelines and we're gonna, you know, keep our numbers down low or if something's gonna spike, it's, it's impossible to predict this at this moment. Uh, and so, uh, I, I would say either assume, you know, on the rosiest end that everything goes back to full blown face to face as normal. I find that unlikely. Um, a modified face to face. Uh, I think again, Lego League in my mind is the easiest to adapt because there is no elimination matches and we can have teams come um, in smaller groups and stay under any overall uh, guidelines in terms of numbers of people at one time in an event. Uh, and then the, the other reality is all the programs are looking at uh, ways to modify their rules and guidelines to allow for a remote event or virtual event, um, uh, whatever terminology they're using. So that if we can't host it at Fairmont State, we probably can't host it in physical format in any fashion, or, or I guess way, shape, or form would be the appropriate way of saying that.
but we will work with uh, other groups like the Department of Education um, as well. So we have we have friends at the Department of Education um, who might be able to assist us um, if we end up. There is a, po a probability of, of you know the state itself running an event, but not necessarily um, our team being the judges and referees. Hey Todd, it's Jacob Pless from Putnam County. Hey, so I appreciate the town hall and the discussion today. I guess my question is, with all the unknowns going on right now, do you, do you see some flexibility in the registration dates for all the different FLL and the, and the, and the VEX programs? I know until we get back to school and understand what the, what the guidelines are, it's going to be difficult for us to maybe sign up right away. Do you see some flexibility going forward? So I know that uh, RECF, has already for VEX has already expanded their registration window. I know that FIRST is planning to do the same for most of their programs. Uh, I don't know if they've made a decision yet on how on where the window falls for FRC, but for their other programs, at least they're planning on extending that window uh, for exactly that reason. All right, thank you. So we're coming up at the end of the hour, and that's we advertised uh, over the lunchtime. But uh, as we said, this is going to be the session was recorded. We will share it. But m m most importantly, please uh, go to maybe John put that link back in the, the chat box again. The wvroboticsalliance.org/slash/covid is where we plan on posting the most up-to-date information as to our response uh, to how we're going to manage and run events, dates, etc. Um, we will obviously be using email as well to communicate. Um, and uh, we provided our email addresses, uh, so feel free to reach out to us. Um, our team is, um, you know, I would, I would say the best in the nation. Um, we are also big. Uh, we, we're we're continue, continuing to add, you know, more team members. So we're, we're fortunate to have uh, John as a, 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 an AmeriCorps volunteer supporting uh, the REC Foundation uh, efforts this year. Uh, and kind of replacing Christopher's role. We have Bobby Mitchell is another AmeriCorps volunteer could support all of our programs. Um, and we have a, a third AmeriCorps volunteer signing up. So these um, dedicated individuals will be able to do things even that, you know, for example, some of the Fairmont faculty can't um, in terms of outreach. Um, and so, so we're gonna move forward and we're gonna support you as best we can. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, contact us via email. Um, you know, I'll, I'll offer that my cell phone is usually on every signature line I put, so you can call me. Um, I basically work like nine to five here, so um, don't hesitate to to try and ask for clarity or clarification or tips. And uh, we will do our best to communicate to you um, how things are evolving moving forward. Is there anything else from my team that you guys wanted to to mention? Uh, just really quickly, uh, I was taking notes and we recorded this session, uh, so I will also be transposing all of the questions and answers we talked about today onto that web page uh, over the course of the afternoon. So I'll keep that up to date as well as I get emails and phone calls from everybody so that everybody's on the same page. Okay, well, it sounds like there's no more questions, but uh, again, feel free to reach out to us, check the website, and um, everyone be safe. Wear, wear your masks. <laughs> Thanks for coming today. <laughs>